Do you like analyzing and discussing your favorite characters from across media? Have you ever taken this a step further and speculated what colors they might be if they were transported into Magic the Gathering? Personally, it's something that I've always enjoyed doing. But with Universes Beyond becoming a staple in Magic, this act of speculation has more weight behind it. That is why in this video I will analyze and assign colors for 10 characters across media. From your favorite movies, comics, anime, and more. Then pair those characters with their very own cards, crafted specifically for this video by my amazing Discord. So if that sounds interesting to you, then join me in the latest episode of Colors in Other Media. Iron Man, or better yet, Tony Stark, the genius behind the helm, is a character best represented by Grixis, or the colors blue, black, and red. Tony is initially best characterized by his haughty playboy nature, and even though he grows and matures over the course of his arc, those underlying traits of black mana always seem to linger, that of ego and unrelenting self-confidence. This ego though is probably well warranted, as he can back it up with his genius level mind, as evident through the construction of the Iron Man suit, among his many other creations. But even for a man who is so goal-driven, red is always seeping through, as Stark can often be impulsive, passionate, and charming. He is a classification that showcases the ever-rare Grixis hero. Hilda, the spirited, artistic, and fun-loving adventurer, is a small girl with a big personality, one that fits within the gruel heroic archetype quite well. She is fearless and nature-loving, and never one to back down from the chance to explore. She is spontaneous and prone to following her whims, and even though she can come off as rude and mischievous at times, she always has the best of intentions. It's just that her emotions tend to bubble up near the surface. The truth is that she can be a great friend to the animals, fantastic creatures, and people she encounters along the way. Littlefinger, or Petter Baelish from Game of Thrones, is best described by Blue Black, or Demir. He is cunning, Machiavellian, and ruthless, traits that are inevitable when black and blue are combined, and no moral center is present within the character. Littlefinger is a character driven by ambitions of power, and seemingly little else. This ambition is then paired with a manipulative and calculating nature. As such, Littlefinger has a penchant for weaving intricate webs of lies, used to control others for his own games, always looking for an advantage that he can use as leverage against others. Personally speaking, I see him as the archetypal Demir character, one who sheds their humanity for that of a scheming sociopath. Freyrin as a character can best be defined by the Simic combination, that of blue and green. Freyrin's aloof and easygoing personality is something that can come out of green mana at times, especially in her being an elf who has lived for centuries and struggles to perceive time as humans do. This long life has then granted her time to work on her magic, and it's something that she takes immense pride in, even going so far as being embarrassed when she makes even the smallest fraction of a mistake, playing into Blue's ideas of perfectionism. Freyrin is a stoic and carefree character who takes certain matters very seriously and leans very much into her colors of blue and green. Even though Link is the classic silent hero, we can still gather from his actions the kind of character this version of him is, and as such the colors white, blue, and green, or Bant, make the most sense for the Breath of the Wild slash Tears of the Kingdom version. For one, he is the archetypal selfless hero who stands up for anyone in need, a duty-bound knight with all the markings of white mana. Link is also quite clever in this universe crafting machines and solving puzzles in a way that showcases he's more than just blade and bow, but a deep mind as well. Green, on the other hand, takes a more abstract place in his identity. He is one bound by an ancient duty and pact, one that sets him against Calamity Ganon, who will destroy everything if Link does not stand against him this hundred years on. Kindred from League of Legends is a character who is two entities forged from a single being, 
and is best represented as the combination of black-green, or Golgari, with each side representing the traits of each colour. As I said, Kindred was originally a singular entity, but due to the lonely existence that being a god of death brought with it, Kindred split themselves into two entities, Wolf and Lamb. Lamb is the composed marksman who guides the willing into death with a single arrow, and is said to be the shepherding force between the two, even if they can come off as apathetic at times. Conversely, Wolf is the primal force of violence, and represents the inevitable cycle of death, for if anyone fails to go peacefully, it is Wolf's duty to track them down and pull the unwilling to their fate. It can be hard to pinpoint a personality to a character who holds five within him currently, so in a way we have to take a more thematic approach, and as such I believe that White Black or Orzov captures this fractured character best. As a hero, Moon Knight's willingness to resort to brutal and morally grey tactics, including maiming and killing opponents, is something that sets him apart from many of his contemporaries, and pushes the black side of his identity. While on the other hand, he is an avatar of the god Khonshu, whose aim is to impart true justice, and as such aligns him to a skewed version of white. Ultimately, Moon Knight walks a precarious balance between these two colours, and at times it's hard to tell which part of him is more prevalent, white or black. While the actions of the Lamb are left up to the player, there are key traits that make this character an easy candidate for Red Black or Rakdos besides their parallel to the other eccentric cult that gives this combination its name. After Lamb's death, they are granted a second chance by the one who waits, in exchange for a cult in the one's name. But the Lamb quickly changes plans, and in the pursuit of godhood, Lamb cunningly exploits the desires of their followers, fostering a cult dedicated not to the one who waits, but to their own ascent to divinity. Whether through vile or benevolent means, the Lamb gathers those around them for the simple fact that they crave the power of godhood for themselves, a selfish motivation classic to this colour pairing. Vash the Stampede is a character who embodies the Boros hero, made up of the colours white and red. His outward persona is characterised by an eccentric love for donuts, salacious behaviour and playful deeds which fit him pretty easily into the red side of this combination. But Vash is more than the flamboyant character he shows on the outside. He's also a person who is altruistic, kind, and a warrior of peace. Honestly, he would just rather everyone get along. Despite enduring loneliness and betrayal, Vash maintains an unwavering hope and love for humanity, showcasing White Mana's belief in the potential for goodness in all individuals. Overall, Vash's dual personalities and moral principles position him firmly within the Boros philosophy. Stain from My Hero Academia is a character with big goals, bigger words, and an extreme moral code, all of which fit him into the combination of Mardu, or white, black, and red. His rigid adherence to his views and the ruthless pursuit of his vision for his version of a better world are an example of white taken to its extremes. Stain backs up his words with a brutal approach, by eliminating what he perceives as fake heroes, reflecting Black Mana's pragmatic and unwavering approach. Red Mana shows itself through Stain's intense passion over his ideals, so much so that it inspires others to his cause, simply through actions and words alone. Stain's character embodies the Mardu philosophy through and through, that of pragmatism, strength, and self-defined morality. Thanks for watching my latest episode in the Colors in Other Media series. If you want to take a closer look at the cards featured in this video and those that didn't quite make it in, then be sure to head over to Dicetry.com and check out the gallery where I'll have all of them posted for a limited time. And I do just want to say a special thank you to all my viewers who have been supporting this channel. It really means a lot. And with that friends, I will catch you in the multiverse. Bye.